Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at calculating probabilities in SPSS. And to do that, we're going to look at an example using a normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10. And there are two types of probability type questions we're going to look at answering. The first one is going to be looking at finding cumulative probabilities. So this might answer a question something like, what is the probability that the value of our random variable is less than 80. The second type of question we're going to look at is sort of going the other direction, where we're going to start with our cumulative probability, and we want to know what value of x gives us that cumulative probability. So that question might be something like, what value of x will we have the probability that we're below that unknown value is equal to 93.32%. So in order to do both of those things, we're going to have to go to transform and compute variable. But first, we need to have data in our data editor. So I've set up two different data sets here. And the first one we will use to calculate probabilities. So here I have three values of x entered. We have that 80 value we saw before, 100 and 125. And we're going to calculate the probability that our normal distribution is below these three values. So we're going to transform. And under transform, the very first option we can click on is compute variable. And that's where we're going to go. So transform, compute variable. And that brings up this uh, rather complicated looking dialog box. And we're going to start over on the right in the function group area. And when we want to calculate a cumulative probability, we're going to select CDF and non-central CDF. After clicking that, we can see now we have a bunch of options in this box directly below that. And since we're looking at the normal distribution, we're going to scroll down and look for CDF.normal. So CDF.normal is right there. And if we double click that, it'll send CDF normal up to the numeric expression box. And before we look at finishing up here in the numeric expression box, we can use the same procedure to calculate probabilities for other random variables just by selecting the appropriate random variable in the function list over here. So I selected CDF normal because our example is using a normal distribution, but we could also do binomial distribution, exponential distribution, and so on just by selecting the appropriate random variable from the list down here. All right, back to our example. So we have cdf.normal up in the numeric expression box, and we can see that there are three question marks in here that we need to replace. And to figure out what SPSS is expecting in these three question marks, we can look in this little function description that's directly below the little calculator keypad looking section in the middle. So down here, we have a description of this function, and we can see that SPSS in the first question mark wants the quantity that we're calculating the probability for. So that's going to be our x value. The second thing SPSS wants is the mean, and the third value is the standard deviation. So now we need to go up and replace all three of these question marks with those values. So first is the quantity that we're calculating the probabilities for. So we entered that in our data set as x. So over here on the left is a list of variables in our data set. We only have x in our data set, so it makes it easy. We select x and send it into the first question mark. The second question mark is where the mean is, and our mean was 100. And the third question mark, we had a standard deviation of 10, so we're entering 10 there. The last thing that we should consider doing is entering something in the target variable box here on the top left. Basically what's going to happen is SPSS is going to calculate these cumulative probabilities for us and it's going to output the results as a new column in our data set. And target variable is where we get to select or specify what we want that new variable to be called. So since we're calculating probabilities, I'm going to go ahead and call that prob. All right, so now we can click OK and we can see in our data editor that we have a new column in our data set with the cumulative 
probabilities that correspond to these three values of x. So the probability that x is less than 80, we can see right here, is just over 2%, 0.02 to 8, if we round. The probability that x is less than 100 is 50%, which we would expect since 100 is the mean. And finally, the probability that x is less than 125, that probability is over 99%, 0.9938 or so. So those are the steps to calculate a cumulative probability starting with a value of x. Now we're going to look at going the other direction. Start with the probability, find the unknown value of x. So I'm going to switch over to another data set. And now I have one column here where I've entered in three probabilities. So these are three cumulative probabilities. And I want to find the value of x that will correspond to these three cumulative probabilities. So the first one we're going to see is what value of x will give us a probability that we're below that value of 93.32%. That was that second example we saw back at the beginning. We're also going to look at what value gives us a cumulative probability of 0.5, which should be 100 since that's the mean. And then finally, what value of x gives us a cumulative probability of 0.05. So for this procedure, we're going to go back to transform and compute variable. And once again, we're going to start in the function group box. But this time, we're going to scroll down and we're going to look for inverse df. So since we're kind of going backwards, we're starting with the probability and finding the value. It's sort of we're inverting that procedure. We're starting with inverse df. So once again, we have a list of possible functions to use down here for a number of different random variables. Since our example is using normal distribution, I'm going to scroll down and look for normal. So right here is idf.normal. Double clicking again. You know, at, from this point, it's very similar to what we did before. Double clicking sends it up to numeric expression box, and we have to fill in the three question marks. Looking at what these question marks mean, same spot down below the keypad portion in the middle. And we can see that it's almost exactly the same. The only thing that's changed is what goes in the first question mark. Now, since we're starting with the probability, the probabilities go in the first question mark. The second question mark is still the mean, and the third one is still the standard deviation. So if we go back up and fill in our question marks, the first one, we're going to send over the probabilities that we entered in our data set to the first question mark. And the second question mark is 100. Third question mark is 10. And importantly, we're making sure that we have commas separating all three of those values. Finally, last thing, what are we going to call this? So filling in the target variable box. And now, since our output is going to be the x value, I'm going to call the target variable x. So clicking OK, we'll get in our data editor a new column. And here are our x values. So with a cumulative probability of 0.9332, that x value is 115. With the cumulative probability of 50%, as we expected, we got 100. Finally, for 0.05, that x value is 83.55. All right, so that wraps up our quick look at calculating probabilities in SPSS. I hope that was helpful, and thanks for watching.